What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another cash video. This should be a very fun one. Not because I have boba in hand, but this time we are outside the South Point and uh, there's a 1020 running. It seems like there's a 1020 running every night and I'm excited to hop in the mix. Should be a pretty fun game. They're playing shorthanded. So we love the shorthanded action as well. So I'm looking forward to this one. Should be a lot of big pots and we'll buy in for a hefty amount, I think. And um, yeah, there's that. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe, like this video. It's always much appreciated and some vlogger tips. Um, it's always really nice. I don't know if you can capture the view or see the view from my phone, but the view from the top floor of the garage is always so pretty, especially in Vegas. You can just see all these lights and you can see the strip behind me. It's, it's beautiful. Anyways, we're gonna hop in there. Let's get to playing some poker. Here at this uncapped 1020 South Point game, we start off with $20,000 in stack and one of the first hands, let's hop into the action. With King-9 offsuit in the small blind, like I said, $20 mandatory straddle, I open it up to $60 when action folds to me, and the straddler makes the call for 40 more. Off to a flop of Queen-10-3 rainbow, here with a gutter and over, I throw out a continuation bet of $80, and for 80 here, he decides on making the call. The turn is the seven of clubs, doesn't really change a whole lot on this board. And I think I have one of two options to either continue applying pressure or just checking this one. And you know the drill, I decide to put money in the middle. I bet out $200 and he just snaps this off. So really quick call, maybe he has a good queen. Let's see a river, which is the beautiful Jack of clubs. Amazing Bink City card to see to start the session. A lot of two player combos get there as well. Some stronger Queen X's like Queen Jack, Queen 10. So with that said, I decided to size up again for $600 and hoping to get a quick call. But sadly, he folds this one. So couldn't get more value after a quick call on the turn. But still always nice to start off the session hot, binking the gutter ball and getting the chips pushed our way. In the following hand, we pick up better looking cards in Ace Queen of Spades. We're on the button with an early position player who limps. A hijack raises to $75. This player has about $8,000 in stack, and here with a very strong hand, I 3 bet him to $275, folds around to this hijack player who decides on a call. The flop comes 10 10 9 to Spades, and he checks to me. Here, a lot of the time, I can certainly put out a bet, but he has a lot more 10 X's than me, and I think we can just check back with a disguised, very strong holding. We're certainly happy to commit money in the middle here, but I check it back. The turn comes the king of clubs. Pretty great card as we improve to a combo draw. We can also credibly rep a lot of the stronger king X's. So when he checks to me for a second time, I fire out 325 thinking that I'm probably going to get fold a lot of the time, but if he does call, we have pretty good equity to fall back on. And for 325, he ends up making the call. So we're off to a river, which comes another 10. Trip 10s on the board, any king, any pair is a full house. And now he bets out $800 and facing the strong lead, facing one of the worst river cards to see. I'm out of this one with just ace high, I fold and sadly we don't get there this time. Trying to stop depending on hitting draws to win hands, we pick up aces in the cutoff. Beautiful sight to see. Action folds to me and I raise it up to $60. We get the small blind to make the call for 60 and oh boy, we've got some action as the straddler puts in the good old three bet to $320. Fist pumping in my head and heart right now. We're playing super deep against this player in a very large game and aces, perfect time to put more money in the middle. So I decide to four bet him to $800. Folds this under the gun straddler and for $480 more, he obliges with a call. And we're playing a pretty big pot, pretty deep stacks. The flop comes queen three, four rainbow. Sick board for us. And when he checks to me, I decided to down bet to 450. I think this is a pretty standard bet, but exploitatively, I think I can size up here a lot of the time. This queen high flop could certainly hit a lot of one pair holdings, or if he had some sort of pocket pair, he's going to call regardless. But for 450, he makes the call. The turn now comes the ace of spades. Wow. He checks to me and, well, I'm a little confused now. 
It brings in a backdoor flush draw, and if this player had pocket kings, then I don't know how much value we can get. So this ace is obviously a very good card for us, but we weren't concerned about being good before. I just checked this one back, play this a little bit deceptively, but I do think a bet might be in order. Anyways, when the turn goes check check, the river comes a 5. So any deuce makes a straight, but in these 4 bet pots it seems pretty irrelevant. He unfortunately checks again for a third time, so probably not going to be a cooler situation like him having pocket queens or anything like that. So here definitely going to bet out something and maybe just trying to get like pocket jacks or pocket kings to make a crying call. Who knows, I bet out $1,000, and I think this $1,000 bet would get a call from even a queen or kings, but ultimately he does end up making the call, and we're going to show the expected winner here, I think, a lot of the time, and when we show, the other player mucks, so scoop a pretty fat pot our way. Interesting dynamics when we see this run out and in a 4-bet pot. Not sure if that turn was a mandatory bet, but as played, we still win. So chipping up in a big way here, this next hand with ace-queen offsuit in middle position, the player on my right limps, and we're not going to play for $20. I raise it up to $100. For this $100 raise, we get the button and limper to call, so three ways to a flop. The flop comes king, 10, 8, 2 hearts. Action checks to me, and here definitely seeing a good board that favors me more. I bet out $225. We get the button to make the call. And we're going heads up to a turn, which comes the Ace of Hearts. Pretty sick now as we improve to top pair. We have a gut shot straight draw along with the queen high flush draw. I decided to bet out $500 here. Mixing between betting or checking, and I decided to bet this time. And the button decides to call for $500. The river now comes a 7. A card that changes pretty much nothing. And now it's a decision to go for thin value or check. I really like the idea of betting for thin value here with a strong top pair. We do block some strong flushes as well, so I bet out $700. And, well, we get some information about the strength of his hand. He decides to ship it for $1665 total. Oh, God. Pretty unfortunate and miserable spot here. Of course, his raise is pretty small comparative to my river bet, so for $965 more, definitely have to think about it. The reason why we bet thin on the river here is that we also get information, and the information that we're receiving right now with his jam is that it's not a bluff. We block some flushes and some straights with the queen of hearts, so it's a little bit relevant, but the only issue is that we only have one pair. With less than $1,000 more to call into like a $4,000 pot, I think about it for a while and certainly am priced in to just close my eyes and make a crying call. But ultimately, I think it's just too likely that we are beat here. So I make a pretty painful fold. And this player is nice enough to show us the King Jack of Hearts. Beautiful flop for him and even a better turn. So pretty nice hand to him. He's going to take this one down and maybe we get punished by our thin river bet or maybe we just got away and didn't have to stack off. All right, time to crawl back here in this next hand. There's an early position open to $120 and we look down at pocket aces on the button. There's also a $40 straddle and even better, before action gets to me, um, the cutoff player to my right, he announces all in. You heard him say all in, right? I heard him say all in, yeah. Yep, you heard that correctly. It's an all-in of about $1,200, and, well, we have aces. So we're going to put in a chip for a call. Um, I'm going to call that all-in. Seems like the right play here. Everyone folds, and I'm going to show my aces because it's the best hand possible right now. We're off to a run out with over $2,500 in the middle, and, well, the run out comes full bricks. This player said that he had ace, king, and mucks, and uh, well, welcome to clear poker talent and skill to manufacture this situation. <laughs> just kidding, it's just an absolute dream scenario when you see a three bet all in, especially such a big one, and well, you look down at an above average hand. So we're gonna take the $1,300 into our chip stack and no complaints. 
The next premium we look down at is Ace King Offsuits. We're in the hijack and there's a $40 straddle. So I open things up to $125. The player to my left seems to be playing a lot of hands, makes the call, the straddler calls as well. So three ways the flop comes, Jack 5-5 five, five, Rainbow. I put out a continuation bet here of $150 with Ace King High. And now the player to my left raises to 350. The straddler folds, and this is definitely a good price to see an ace or king here. So not really confident that we're ahead, but can't fold to only $200 in this really small raise. I make the call. The turn comes the deuce of clubs. So it's a complete brick. And when I check, he actually checks it back. So it seems like he's just capped to a jack of some sort. Anyways, the river is a nine. And I just check it here, trying to get the showdown with Ace King High. And now he bets out on the river for $400. It's a pretty small bet. And like I said, I range him on some sort of Jack X holding. And I think we can put a lot of pressure onto those holdings. Not thinking that a lot of players can fold Jack X to pressure. But I think in these bigger games, we're able to apply a lot of pressure and get thinking players to fold. So... Being able to credibly rep all the over pairs in the world, and we do have good removal to aces and kings. I check raise and put in an ambitious raise as a bluff to $1,800. Like I said, pretty ambitious, but I think this is worth a try at these bigger games. And he thinks about it for a while and says he just doesn't know what to do. So at the very least, we applied pressure, and even if he calls, at least we put him in a pretty tough spot. And ultimately, he, he does make the call, and... It's with a surprising hand when we show our hand. He has pocket queens. So that was never going to work, but looks like he had queens called preflop. Didn't see it coming. So nice hand. He caught that fair catch, I guess. With that ambitious bluff not working, time to rebound. There's an $80 straddle now on board and the game's playing pretty big. We're in the small blind with king nine of diamonds. And I put in a raise and open to $200 because... That's what you do when there's a $40 and $80 straddle. The only gun player makes the call who's in the $20 straddle and everyone folds. So we're going to a flop of deuce, three, four, two diamonds. Here with the king high flush draw, you can decide to bet or check. And this time I bet out 325. And interestingly enough, he just raises right off the bat on this flop to $1,025. <sighs> Another pretty gross spot, and this player doesn't have much behind considering the straddle. He's got about 1400 in stack, and I think our only option is to simply jam or fold, because calling here doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for $700 more, and we're not playing for a whole lot behind less than the size of the pot. So on an action-heavy table, I think I'm willing to gamble here, and with two over cards and a flush draw, screw it. Let's go for it. I jam, and obviously he makes the call for not much behind. And all of a sudden, we're playing a massive pot all in to a run out with King High. Let's go to a run out, and we are unfortunately unimproved. This player shows us the ace, six of diamonds. Rivers a six for a pair. And, well, we're going to sheepishly muck because... Ace high was good anyways, and we were so screwed when we went all in against this hand. Unfortunate to lose, but I guess another punt, back-to-back -back punts. And just like that, we're going to add on for $10,000 more to our stack. And with the $80 straddle on board, we're ready to ride the variance. We're playing a big game now. The hand following that, we have a normal 5 10 20 and we pick up King Jack off suit in the cutoff. So I raise it up to a standard $60 and we get the button and big blind to call. Three ways the flop comes, ace, jack, six, rainbow. And when the big blind checks to me, I've got middle pair, decent kicker. Don't want to bet this one multi-way. So I check and the button checks behind. The turn comes the seven of diamonds and the big blind checks once again, given the passive action. I'm going to go for some value with middle pair and good kicker. We can get value from worse Jack X holdings, some straight draws and such. So I decided to bet out $150 and for 150, the button folds, but the big blind who checked twice makes the call. Interesting spot. And we're off to a river, which is the king. 
Pretty sick as we've improved to two pair now and for a third time he checks. I'm just maybe hoping he has an ace now somehow and we just sucked out on him, but we certainly have to bet. I just don't know what we're targeting for value, but with two pair, I size up to $400 and he thinks about it for a while and ultimately ends up calling, finally. Get a nice rebate from our last few punts. We show two pair and this player shows us ace three of hearts. So little did you know, of course we sucked out. We get ships pushed our way, living that luck box life. For the last interesting hand of the session, this one is uh, pretty fucked. We're playing a 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, 160 straddle, which is what we're in. And of course, the player on the left puts in the 320 straddle. Welcome to the table. So effectively, um, I don't even know how to describe the straddles, but we've straddled all the way around the table and there's just like $500 dead in the middle. Anyways, we have king six offsuit. It seems pretty playable. So I decided to limp this one over to the 320 straddle. He has the option and checks. So we've been battling so far the past few hours at this table and we're gonna see a big one. Let's go to a flop with already a good amount in the middle. The flop comes queen three, four rainbow and here with king six high. Uh, I'm gonna check this one. We're just playing in the streets right now. So pretty much just navigating as we can go and he decides to check this one back. When the turn comes another queen, pretty good looking card and I'm pretty happy with my king high showdown for now. I decided to check this one and he bets out $500. I haven't really seen this guy bluff all day, but he's certainly capable. And given the dynamics where he didn't bet flop, this queen should be a total brick, but who knows? I decided to make the call with king high and a dream. So when the river comes, a deuce doesn't change a whole lot besides five, six getting there, but five, six is a little less likely considering we hold a six in hand. I check for a third time, would love to get the showdown, and he bets out $1,500. I'm thinking in my head here when he bets out the $1,500, if he has an ace high holding or a pair, seems like he's very likely to check back with some showdown or at least pick a smaller sizing because this large bet is pretty polarized and he's just repping he has a queen or complete air. And look, we've got king high and it's pretty ambitious to think king high is good, but given the table dynamics and how this hand has played out so far, I think we're good here. So I think about it for a while and ultimately make the call for $1,500 with king high and he shows us 10 six off suits. And just like that, that's the story of how we won a $5,000 pot with just king high, no kicker, and whew, pretty nice hand to win, pretty nice pot to scoop up. And also we played a 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, 160, 320 hand. So that's quite the mouthful, but if you wanna see more ridiculous hands like this, hit that subscribe button because you'll never know what kind of crazy poker adventures I'm up to next. So wrapping up this video here today, what a ridiculous session this was. King High Hero Calls, massive buy-ins. I mean, this is kind of the cash game session video that you're looking to see, I assume. Anyways, to wrap off this video, we're in the game for 30,000 out for 32,855. And nice to always walk away with a profit. And that's always cool. So I have no complaints. Let me know what you guys think about these high stakes cash games. I'm having a lot of fun playing them. And maybe you'll see some more to come in the future on this channel. This Vegas trip has been a lot of fun. And that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit that like button. It's always much appreciated. Peace.